Hello students, I am Ms. Rachana Chakravarti here, ready to explain the second poem of the book First Flight of class 10th, The Fire and Ice. I am sure you are going to get the maximum benefit out of this chapter because I am going to give the total explanation along with the figures of speech. So let's begin with the poem Fire and Ice. Although this is a short poem of only nine lines, but it has deep meaning hidden. So we are going to learn about it. But first we will learn about the poet. Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. His work was initially published in England before it was published in America. Born on 26 March 1874 and died on 29th of Jan 1963 after completing his 88 years. So he was basically a nature poet and about the philosophical thoughts he had always put in his poems had made it amazing and inexplicable. So let's read the poem first. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire, but if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. See only nine lines and still it has deep meaning. It's basically about antithesis. Antithesis means two opposite things. You can see in the picture fire and ice. They both are just opposite. One is full of heat and one is extremely cold. So you cannot compare both are same. Although both are not same, still it's completely different. Although they are going to meet with the same fate. So let's begin with the first thing that is desire. Fire has been compared with desire. Desire means that your wishes, your dreams, your lust, you want to achieve something in your life. You are passionate about it. You are running behind it. It can be anything. It can be a person. It can be a goal. It can be anything. You want to get the success day by day. And you have put your aim very high. Every time you are getting something, you are not happy and satisfied. You are running behind. This is fire and ice. Fire versus ice means fire versus ice here. Fire is equal to ice because fire will be the reason behind the destruction of this world. The world will finish one day. Some say the world will end in fire. So this fire is direct comparison with desire. So you can understand that the desire that is like a burning fire will be the reason behind this world's end. And then some people say that it will not be fire, it will be ice. But from what I have tasted of desire, tasted means here, he himself has experienced in his life. So he says that hatred is also no less. So hatred is a negative emotion. You do not like someone. You don't like that person and you want to kill that person or anyhow you want to hurt that person is also negative emotion. So firstly, he is with those people, those who favor fire. But next, if it had to perish twice, suppose this world has to come to an end second time. So he would take the side of eyes. So I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great. Because hatred creates violence, crime, anger, all the bad things, aggression, everything comes after having the emotions and feelings of hatred. So he eventually wants to say that nothing is less, either fire or ice. That means either it is desire or hatred both will be the reason behind the end of this world means nobody will be surviving because these will be the reasons behind the end of this world everyone would be dead because they would be behind each other's life 
everyone would try to hurt others so it will bring an end to the world so let's have a particular look like the gist of the poem is the short poem outlines the familiar question about the fate of the world wondering if it is more likely to be destroyed by fire or ice people are on both sides of the debate and frost introduces the narrator to provide his personal take on the question of the end of the world the narrator first concludes that the world must end in fire after considering his personal experience with desire and passion the emotions of fire yet after considering his experience with ice or hatred the narrator acknowledges that ice would be equally destructive ice is also no less so the conclusion that we get that in fire and ice robert frost wants us to know that fire describes as passion which is hot and hasty and ice describes as rational which is cool and deliberate by using figurative language like symbolism we know that we must read this poem repeatedly to really have a deeper understanding of this poem so this symbolism analysis can help us to achieve that i will ask you to read this poem again and again to understand the main idea of this poem that the world is going to end in fire and ice both now students let's have the figures of speech now the very first line you read this some say the world will end in fire some say in ice now you can see some say the consonant sound s s it's repeated some say both the words starting with s so it's alliteration and world will again it's alliteration next line you can see the same word some say is used so it is anaphora a n a p h o r a anaphora is some thing that is repeated one after another line the same words and then you will have an enjambment can you read the last three lines to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice there is no punctuation mark and this is a single line which is actually covering three lines so it is enjambment remember enjambment is without any punctuation if we are con continuing with the more than two lines it's called enjambment in the conclusion we have seen that symbolism is there and you can see fire is symbolizing desire the same ice hatred so so it's metonymy m e t o n y m y remember metonymy is something some symbolic things that we are substituting with the other thing that is fire replaced with desire and eyes replaced with hatred so it's metonymy then in its title only you can see antithesis antithesis is what just opposite fire and ice they both are just opposite of each other so you can understand antithesis is used here now students read the fourth line i hold with those who favor fire with those now see the with and those so this is the consonant sound which doesn't start the very beginning but it comes at the end of a word and again starting with the another word with the so it's here consonants c o n s o n a n c e this is another one then in the first and fourth line we have assonance the vowel sound used repeatedly like world will end in fire and i hold with those who favor fire you can see the repetitive use of o and i in first and fourth line so i hope you have understood it and i will ask you to read it again and again and let me know if you have any problem or query regarding this poem so we'll bring you next another videos related to the same book 
and see you soon thank you